All right, so it's just after 6.40 p.m. and we will um, commence our zoning meeting for tonight. Who's here for debilitating? Uh, Isaac Fleischer and uh, Chris Chamberlain is here as well. Hello. Hello. And I saw uh, Dick Evans earlier. Dick, you there? Yes, I'm here. Thank you for Toro Verde. All right, so uh, this morning I circulated the um, memo from town council. Did uh, both sides receive it? Yes, thank you. Yes. Okay. So, for the benefit of the audience, it's a fairly lengthy opinion, but... Um, Conclusion, which is stated in both his summary paragraph at the beginning and his concluding paragraph, is that we can grant a special permit to DMCTC with the existing number of spaces that are there without violating the <coughs> parking provisions of our bylaw. So um, does either side wish to be heard on um, the opinion of town council? Um, yes. Go ahead. My turn, Roger? Yes, Dick. Okay, thank you. Um, well, thank you for sharing the opinion. And uh, um, I, I've reviewed it closely. And, and I just want to say that I, I, I can't... I can't uh, and don't accept uh, the council's opinion for a number of reasons. Uh, one of them is I think it's based on an incorrect assumption of fact, uh, namely that Toro Verde has only 5,000 square feet of space available to it and uh, debilitating has 3,100 square feet. When in fact, Toro Verde has 8,000 available to it and, Tor and debilitating has almost 8,000 and possibly more on the lower level. Um, I'm not sure why uh, council accepted those, those numbers because they're just flatly wrong. Uh, secondly, I think it's really hasty to, uh, to uh, say that the bylaw simply means something other than it says. Uh, when it says entire property, it, it doesn't mean occupied portion of the property. It doesn't say occupied portion of the property. It, uh, it says entire property and it's entirely reasonable that when the town adopted this bylaw, it didn't want a marijuana operation. Remember this entire property rule is part of the marijuana bylaws, not the general bylaws. Uh, but it's entirely possible that the town didn't want a marijuana operation going in where there was not sufficient parking for the entire property. Uh, now, whether that's a good rule or bad rule, that's debatable, but the board can't simply disregard its plain meaning. Uh, and, and if you don't if you don't agree with it and simply say that it's unreasonable to construe that it means what it says. And third thing is that <clears throat> council just ignores the underlying problem here, which is that the plaza was approved for a lot fewer spaces than uh, required by law and um, instead treats the consequences of uh, construing the, the, the bylaw uh, or treats the consequences of, of that of that failure, not not the failure itself. And, and as a result of that, I think it's going to be it's going to create a mad competition for special permits for the thirty odd spaces that council thinks are remaining. And when those are gone, then some forty five hundred square feet of the plaza uh, uh, will presumably remain vacant, uh, which may arguably constitute a taking. Uh, certainly running contrary to section 31 of the bylaw that says that the uh, special permit review process is intended to ensure that the proposed use will not have an adverse effect on other uses in a neighborhood. And here, uh, other uses will be, will be forbidden uh, after 30 spaces are allocated, and that's certainly an adverse effect. Uh, <laughs> You know, a couple of years ago, I had a client in my office, a math professor at the university. I asked him if he could prove that two and two was five. And he, and he said, sure. 
And I said, how do you do that? And he said, he sits with the assumptions. You assume that the first two are, is, is, is a three. And so if you assume that two is represent, is constitutes three, then three plus two is five. And that's what's happened here. Castles assumed the de de debilitating Toro Verde space have less space available to them. And uh, council has assumed that the, the, the town really meant to say occupied portion of the property. And uh, that's uh, the basis by which the uh, council reached this conclusion that two and two can equal five. So I, I, we reject the uh, conclusion. We think he's wrong on the facts and he's wrong on the law. Thank you very much. Isaac, you wish to be heard? Yes, I do, thank you. Um, so uh, as it will come as no surprise, I agree with council's opinion. It's, uh, it's exactly the uh, interpretation that I put forward at our last meeting. Um, it does not, this interpretation doesn't in any way require um, ignoring language or twisting language that's in the ordinance. In fact, what, what we're doing here is looking at the plain meaning of the ordinance, uh, which, is, which is the rule when interpreting statutes or uh, town ordinances. So I guess, I will, I'll address uh, Attorney Evans' points uh, in the order that he presented them. Um, his first point is that there are 8,000 square feet um, in, the, in the building where Toro Verde is located, and there's 8,000 square feet of space in the building where um, DMC is located. Uh, the, the issue here is that these buildings are not solely being used as uh, retail marijuana. Um, currently they're vacant and presumably in the future, uh, portions of the buildings could be used um, for other office and retail uses. Um, Toro Verde special permit is for a 5,000 square foot retail establishment and DMC's special permit application is for a 3,100 uh, square foot retail establishment. Uh, there's absolutely no reason for uh, Attorney Evans' uh, uh, leap to then say that the entire building must be a retail establishment. Uh, in fact, when it comes to Toro, when it comes to DMC's building, there are seven separate condo units within that building. Um, so it, certainly, each each unit could be a separate use. Um, in this case, DMC is uh, going to be occupying. Uh, five of the of the seven units um the uh the next the next point that he makes is it's, it's going back to this uh this language in the um in the ordinance that uses the word entire property uh, and, and just as a reminder I, i'm going to read it one more time um and I, I apologize i know we've all heard it a lot but i want it to be fresh in our minds um it says the applicant for a special permit for such use uh, that such use is a marijuana establishment uh, the applicant for a special permit for such use shall demonstrate that the entire property shall comply with these requirements and controls following the establishment of such use thereon. So the, the most, you know, the plain meaning of that is that um, once the, once the special, if the special permit applicant can show that there's sufficient parking for their use and in the aggregate, they will not exceed the parking requirements for the whole site. So com when combined with the other uses, that, that makes sense. That's how it's been interpreted um, by, uh, by town council. And at, in the case at hand, there are no other current uses on, uh, certainly not in, in building B um, and not in, the whole entire plaza, uh, the whole condominium. Um, there's one other permitted use, and that is Toro Verde. We've established that between Toro Verde and DMC, there's uh, the uh, 87 parking spaces is uh, more than sufficient. Um, and to and what uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna go now. This kind of leads into Dick's third point, which is that he's considering potential uses for the remainder, for the vacant space that's, that's remaining. So we've got two, uh, we've got Toro Verde and then DMC. 
we've established there's enough parking for those two uses. The concern uh, that Dick has is will that prevent um, other users from filling out the remainder of the space? And that's not what's being discussed at this special permit hearing. The answer is, is, is possibly yes. It, it does depend on the use. There are different uses that are allowed and they have different um, uh, parking requirements. They are not all, um, they don't all require uh, one space per 150 square feet, but, but certainly uh, there would not be enough space for every square foot of all condominium units here to be occupied with retail space. Um, but the facts are that at the time of this application, they are not occupied by anything. Uh, there is only one other permitted use and that is Toro Verde's. So we're not, we're not doing uh, verbal gymnastics here to, um, to get around um, the language of the statute. We're simply interpreting it in the most plain meaning and uh, rational way it could possibly be interpreted. Thank you. Okay. Any comments from any members of the public? I don't hear any. And then we'll <clears throat> ask the board. Uh, oh, Dick, you have a question? Uh, uh, thank you, Roger. I just wanted to say that the, the plain meaning of entire property is entire property. There's no nothing ambiguous about those words, entire property. That's the plain meaning. That's the language of the bylaw. And that's what, what the, the board is bound by. Bound by. Okay, thanks. So uh, I'm sure each of the board members have an opinion. Um, I do want to remind the board that after the last hearing, Attorney Evans and Attorney Fleischer and myself worked on preparing um, a statement of agreed facts that we did submit to town council. And we spent um, you know, a couple of hours uh, exchanging emails on uh, the various components of that statement. And we did reach an agreement, we did submit it. So I don't quite understand why Attorney Evans says the council is wrong when he mentions 5,000 square feet and 3,100 square feet respectively, because those were stipulated to in our statement of facts. Uh, uh, no, Roger. That, that's not correct. I'm looking, uh, at, I'm looking at it right now. In terms of who received what permit. It says building A is under lease to Toro Verde, who received a special permit in 2019 to operate a 5,000 square foot marijuana retail store. It goes on to say in building B, <clears throat> the building now seeks a special permit to operate a 3,100 square foot marijuana retail store. That's the purpose That's, of the agreed statement of facts. It's so you don't have to argue about it in the future. But the fact finder or the decision maker has a consolidated statement. Uh, yes, where counsel was wrong, Roger, is where he says in that paragraph that starts with not knowing what space would be devoted to storage. He says, um, uh, but presuming that Toro Verde and DMC will use all their square footage, then the parking requirements for their parking operation would be Toro Verde 5,000 equals 333 spaces and so forth. But that's not correct. The, the space available to Toro Verde is 8,000 square feet, although they only applied to use uh, 5,000. And the space available to, to debilitate it is, is also nearly 8,000 feet. All right. I, I suppose but the space available for Toro Verde to operate a marijuana establishment is 5,000 square feet. That's what their special permit is for. And, and likewise for, uh, for DMC. Um, the, the language you just cited, uh, town council is choosing to uh, account for zero storage space. Town council is assuming that every square foot that is permitted will be uh, utilized for the use. So the, the assumption only 
only increases, and there's, the assumption is the maximum amount of space that, that could be used for a marijuana retail establishment. Right, so I don't want to argue each and every point or every statement or sentence that I ought to have a, have a uh, back and forth on it. What I want to say is uh, we don't send out questions to town council um, every meeting, probably even one out of 10 meetings, we don't send out questions. We do when we want further guidance. We recognize as a board that we're not bound by the town council's opinion. It's guidance to us. We make our own decisions. Uh, we wanna make sure that the town council has a grasp of the facts. I can say he did have a grasp of the facts. I spoke to him. He saw our statement of agreed facts and I can see from his opinion, he understood the problem that was presented to him. Obviously, if he renders an opinion, one side's not gonna like it. Um, but this is what we asked him to do. He rendered the opinion. Therefore, it becomes our task as the board members to uh, continue in our deliberations here. And uh, we now have this under our belts as something that can guide us. So having said that, um, is there anything else the board wants to come on other than parking that we want to get into or, or he, um, we proceed to um, take a vote tonight? Roger, I, I, I found the opinion from town council helpful. Um, parking seemed to be the thing that was the biggest sticking point. So I'm okay at this point. All right. Well, one thing we should talk about is who is our third decision maker tonight? Deborah apologized she could not attend. So it's the, uh, the third regular board member. And in this case, we have two alternates available. We have Kristen and we have Fred, and we have three hearings tonight. So we will divide up the tasks between the alternates, but as no. Kristen and Fred no. Thank you, hold up. care to vote tonight, um, or which of you I should say. Yeah, I'm, I'm comfortable voting. I, I guess I, I could vote on this one and I'll leave the other two to Kristen. Okay. Sounds fine to me, Fred. All right, so Fred, you're the third member of our panel on this particular hearing. Okay, I, I, I guess we'll have to say- You have Fred? We, we need to look at what's being proposed today, not what's available or what could be in the future. Yeah, there's more square footage that's not being used and the additional square footage yeah, could require additional parking that we have no idea today how much or where that's going to be. Uh, I think we need to act on what is being requested today. And I think our legal opinion uh, discusses some of that too. And, and also the, the fact that our bylaws say that the, the square footage should exclude storage area. And I think uh, that, that is, is, is being, uh, being addressed by, by our town council when they, when they talk about parking spaces and also figuring in the, the, the amount of retail that each, each owner is gonna have in a building. They're not proposing using the entire space available. So I, I think today we need to act on what, it, what they're proposing to for their use for their portion of the buildings. Okay. Well, it sounds like we don't have any questions for the um, applicant or the opponent. Therefore, let me make a motion that we will um, continue in public session here, but we'll close the public dialogue portion of the meeting and then the board members will deliberate and um, be open. So I make that motion. I second it. All right, so we're gonna close out the comments from each side. I'll take the initiative. I believe that um, uh, our town council's opinion was on um, point with my thought process last time when I said that we were gonna focus on what was in front of us today 
and not speculate on, on future uses. So um, other than the, the parking issue, the um, application uh, appears to be well thought out, uh, appears to address the um, key components of our um, marijuana bylaw. And uh, then when it comes to the disputed parking uh, issue, I would side in uh, favor of the applicant that there is enough parking there for an additional 3,100 square feet of uh, marijuana retail. So I would be in favor of uh, voting in favor, of voting to approve the application. Uh, I, I agree with you, Roger, and I have been uh, bothered by the you know, the, the speculation about 8,000 square feet and so forth, we have to deal with what's in front of us. I agree with you 100%. And what's in front of us is a request for 3,100 square feet. And Toro Verde is limited to 5,000 square feet for its marijuana operation. Um, and, and, and those are facts um, because that's what the special permit was for. So um, I tend to agree with you and would... Um, would favor the request from that's in front of us. Fred? Uh, yes, I, I, I agree with what you and uh, I guess Bob are saying that we need to focus on the request in front of us today. And, and, I, and I think they've presented their case that there is enough parking available today. That's what we're talking about. What's there today or what in the near future, what is the use of the property? So I, I guess I would support uh, their request uh, for a permit to use use that parcel, that portion of the building because parking is sufficient for their portion of the building. Okay, so that is a three to zero uh, vote in favor of the application. It's unanimous, that's what's required. The application is approved. We'll write up the decision and file it with town clerk. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, board. Thank you guys very much. Okay, so we have our next uh, meeting at 7.15. So we have a, a few minutes. If people wanna take a 10 minute break, that would be uh, appropriate. Hey. All right, well, 7.30 by my clock and not having heard from witnesses. Um, what's the board's pleasure? Shall we just push on to the next hearing and move the Masons over to November? I'm fine with that. That's all we can do. I think it's all we can do. I don't think it's fair to keep everybody waiting. And by the same token, there may be a butters here. I think there are butters here. It's unfair to keep them waiting around. To expect them to sit through this, the next hearing and hope that the Masons will show up at the end of it. So even if they do show up at the end of the next hearing, we're just going to tell them that we will see them on November 4th. So, uh, Mary, what time would that be on November 4th? Well, we already have two ahead. One would be for 640. The other one uh, that just arrived would be for 7 o'clock or 7.15, depending on how long you think the ADU at 640 might take. Right. Well, since we never know, um, why don't we say 7.15 on November 4th and We'll see what happens that night. Okay. Oh, so what are this? This will be the third session, the, the third item on the agenda. One, right. one is for six forty. Do we want the next one to be for seven o'clock or seven fifteen, and then this one? Well, let's do the next one at seven, and do this one at seven fifteen. That might be optimistic, but <laughs> okay. This seven, way we don't have down fifteen for this one. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Do we have the folks here for the Waitley RE Holdings LLC here? Yes. yes. We do. Hi, everybody. 
Roger, um, it's posted as 745. I do know that. So I think the unfairness would come in if, if we concluded before 745, which we won't. And, and some about her who wanted to speak against it was not allowed to. So why don't we start, it's only 13, 14 minutes away, and then we'll make sure we don't conclude anything before 745. I think we'll be okay. 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 All right, so Chris, you're here for the petitioner. Yes. Council, I see you're here. I am. All right, I also have my father, Bob, is on as well. John LaSalle is here. John is here as well. <clears throat> All right, so we left off last time by um, agreeing to look at the case that you had cited and continue hearing for any other comments from any of butters. We, we did get a letter in via email from Mr. Ludlam, who said he was going to attend in person. Is Mr. Ludlam here? He did. Well, I got a, a letter from his wife that indicated they planned to attend. So they may be here later. They may be here on the 745 schedule. Yes. So uh, from the petitioner's perspective. He did, excuse me, her, her husband, uh, Mr. Ludlam, did send a letter. Uh, also, we could wait for them to be here to discuss that, or you could, I could read it now, or? No, I'd rather wait for them to be here. And right, okay. The letter reading is fine if a person can't be here, but if a person's going to be here, they can present their own arguments with or without a letter. So, um, so we have that ahead of us, potentially. Uh, from the petitioner's perspective, is there anything new that you want us to think about or consider? Uh, no, I don't believe so. I think we are, um, you know, I think last time, you know, we, we shared certain drawings and various things of that nature, mainly because of the um, receipt of the special permit in the past and a change. But uh, as, it, as it relates to this meeting, it's, it's related to the variance request. And we actually asked our um, A&E guys not to come tonight because we don't think Right now, getting into the specific plans and things of that nature is, is important. We're really focused on the variance. And I think as we, um, you know, hopefully get, get the variance granted, then we can come back through the special permitting process again um, and, and work with the town to come to a um, mutually agreeable uh, uh, presentation and plan that works on the site with regard to buildings or greenhouses as, as, as they see fit. Okay. So for your benefit, uh, we talked about this at the first meeting. Deborah Carney is not here, not participating tonight. Uh, we have our alternates who were present last time. <coughs> um, Kristen Vivon is going to be the third voting member for tonight's hearing, in addition to myself and Bob Smith, Fred's here observing. Um, I want to ask a question before we get into the case and, and the analysis of the case, which, um, you know, maybe a hard question, but you were here. Uh, um, we had a number of hearings. We granted you a special permit. We had a view. We saw the condition of those greenhouses. They were uh, pre, uh, pre the year that was required by the regulation. Um, why didn't it occur to you at that time that they were not going to be fit for your purposes? Yeah, I think I went into this a little bit last time, but, you know, um, we've recently partnered with a new uh, grower who has quite a bit of experience in Maine. And, you know, given the time, I don't want to say any names here, but we were given, given some kind of bad intel on the greenhouses indicating that they'd be used could be reused and, and renovated slightly. Now, when we started uh, the process after the special permit of spending quite a bit of money actually on the site so far, um, it was made clear to us very quickly that these greenhouses and, and you know, without knowing about any other greenhouses in the, in the Whaley area, um, I'm not convinced that really there's any 
greenhouses that were used in the agricultural space um, for really any purpose that could be repurposed with minor modifications to grow cannabis and control odor and, and the various things that the town is gonna to require. So basically um, upon receipt of the special permit, we started investing in, in the different partnerships that I, I mentioned last time. That's our um, contractors, it's, it's the you know, different engineering folks, it's our, our law firm partner. And it became apparent at that point um, that you know, these things were not going to be easily renovated and we'd actually spend a quite a bit of money renovating them, which would almost result in a complete um, newly built greenhouse as it is. So as we looked through the process, we said, it makes more sense to look at this site in general and look at it from an efficiency standpoint, from a solar standpoint, from a water research standpoint, and get this site um, built properly and that will allow us to not only get the project done efficiently from a cost standpoint, but also um, be, be much, it'd be much easier to um, abide by all the different regulations that the town is going to have us um, abide by as far as odor control and, and things like that. So, um, you know, long and short of it is, I think once we got to the point of the special permit, we, we secured our funding with our investors, started spending some quite a bit of money on the site um, at this point and realized that from a cost benefit standpoint, it makes more sense to renovate, sorry, excuse me, completely demolish the greenhouses and, and build new on the site. And you know, given the special permit um, that was issued on the site, from our perspective, um, building this new state of the art uh, is, is far more beneficial from our perspective and the town's perspective as well. But you had an expert come, I believe he was from California. We spent most of one session listening to his presentation. We told you at the prior meeting, prior to that uh, special permit uh, session, I'm talking about that we wanted to hear from, from your expert. He came via Zoom, he gave a nice presentation and his conclusion was that these greenhouses could meet the um, uh, odor uh, or, or could have the odor removing technology installed and satisfy our requirement that there be no perceptible marijuana odor off the premises. We listened to that, we relied upon it, we built some conditions into the permit. Um, so are you telling us now that, that he was also wrong? No, I'm not telling you he was wrong. I think his interpretation of our of our plan was to renovate the greenhouses in a manner that would properly seal them in a way um, that he could control odor inside of them. So, um, you know, we were so early on in the process, we didn't have our full construction plan at that point. But, you know, I have no doubt that he could come in after a significant renovation, which is almost bringing them down to uh, the floor and rebuilding them, that he could control odor. Um, but if, if we were to simply leave the greenhouses as is and do, you know, minor certain modifications to them, I would imagine that he would have come back to us and said, this was not part of the deal. Um, I can't control odor in these. But assuming we got through a significant renovation, basically building them from the ground up again, he could, I, I'm still convinced he could do that. And I'm assuming he would say the same. Now that Johnson case from 1972 that uh, Andy cited, I read it, read it twice actually. And um, <clears throat> for the benefit of our other panel members tonight, uh, this is what's called a rescript opinion. So um, when the appeals court issues an opinion, it can be either a full opinion or what they call a rescript opinion, which is a short opinion. And generally speaking, the rescript opinions are specific to that case and they're not viewed as widespread um, uh, interpretations of the law that are gonna to apply to other cases into the future. But be that as it may, that Johnson case talks about different cost factors in uh, 
renovating the church versus demolishing it and uh, putting up single or multifamily residences, which was ultimately allowed. Do you have numbers for us? I think at a minimum, we have to satisfy ourselves under the hardship standard that you're asking for, uh, if we were to grant a variance, what the hardship is. We, we can't just have someone come in and say, it's gonna be a hardship, we gotta do this. We need some evidence. What's, what's the cost to renovate those structures versus the cost of ripping them down and putting in the new ones? Do you have numbers? So when we, when we initially looked at the, you know, again, until we got the special permit, we were a little reluctant to spend significant funds. As we've gone through and got the um, redevelopment plan as far as renovation, um, and we went through that with the Allegroni folks and, and some other folks, the greenhouse folks, it was determined that it, you know, we would basically be building these new um, because they're in such a state of disrepair you'd be bringing them down to the stud, to floors anyways and building them new. So from a reconstruction standpoint or a ground up standpoint, that's, that's the, you know, there is definitely a, a cost element that is more, I don't have a specific number, but what we were talking about is from a, these greenhouses were laid out in an inefficient manner over the last several years. And from an operational standpoint, I think there's a burden as far as inefficiencies go, um, the ability to control power, uh, which has been important to the town, the ability to control water, which has been important to the town. And just from a true operational standpoint, it's generally better to have these things all together. And that's kind of why we've looked at this thing from a more ground up standpoint, let's build them new. Um, so to be honest, we, we won't, we wouldn't proceed on this project if we have to reuse the existing greenhouses going forward. Um, it's simply uh, not a good use of our funds. And we're talking an investment in this site in the initial stage in the five to $6 million range. And over the course of the remaining site, 10 to $15 million. So significant. And we've, we've you know, worked with our grower, we've worked with the construction firm and that's a significant investment in, in the town of Whaley that you know we're excited about. And we hope we can get to an answer of, of yes here and we can work together to um, develop the site into something that really looks nice and it, and it can benefit the town and create some jobs and, and really be a good, a good thing here. Um, you know, but when we looked at the site from renovating these things, we realized we're gonna spend a ton of money on it and it's still in an inefficient layout. And it just doesn't make any sense to, to move forward in that direction. Oh, Bob, you're muted. Who are you talking about? Uh, I just wondered, Chris, the first day you ever walked onto the site, wouldn't all of that have been obvious to you? They are Again, I think places. A, sorry, I, I missed the last part. I apologize. Um, well, they are the greenhouses are in separate places. Uh, it would have been you talk about the fact that now you realize that they are inefficiently laid out. Well, wouldn't that have been obvious when you walked on the site the first time? It, it, it would not have been obvious to me, Bob. Quite honestly, no. Um, as we've we've like I said established a an equity arrangement with a grower from Maine who has about 10 different locations. Um, he made that clear. Um, as a lot of people in this industry, it, it's new, right? So when we first got involved, we were reliant on a, a potential head grower who is no longer with us, okay? So when we went into the process, it was brand new to us and we were relying on information from an individual who frankly didn't know um, enough about it to advise us properly. We realized that shortly, you know, after we got into the process and then that, that, that spurred us to get a, a, a new arrangement and a new partnership with a grower who could do this the right way. So to answer your question, we certainly step on the site. You realize that these things are in, in disrepair, but to me, who's never, I'm not, a, I'll tell you right now, I'm not a grower. I'm a, in finance and real estate, I look at the site saying, this is a nice site, very nice site. 
It's it's well 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 tucked away from from the main area. It's a really nice site, and I looked at that and said this is great. And I had you know some some guidance from someone who wasn't really experienced in the field, give us some bad advice, quite honestly. And as we've gone through the process, and we've spent almost a hundred thousand dollars on the process, we've realized that this site could be really really nice, but we need some. Um, help from the town here to get the get the project done and we're willing to invest quite a bit of money in the site and make it look really nice and, and do a lot of good things for the town so hopefully that answers your question but no I wish I knew you can always look look back and say I wish I wish but you know quite honestly no I didn't I didn't know that at the time hey Chris this is this is Andrea speaking if I might just add to that answer um, I think the timing of this is important uh, the special permit, um, the, the town issued the special permit in March, and um, the design build folks at Allegroni got involved much later than that, in the summertime. Uh, so did I, and I know that the new grower got on the team then. And that confluence of factors, those people coming together and giving the site a new examination, I, I, really, I really think that was what led us to the conclusions we're at right now. Um, I mean, that's really why we're here for the variance. I, just to just to add to that, the, the special permit was really the catalyst for us to start heavily investing in this project. You know, until that happened, we said, you know, we're going to try to limit our our capital resources. And uh, you know, since that that catalyst, we've we've engaged several professionals that have great experience in the process. Um, we've locked in quite a bit of money from an investment um, individual, and we're like I said before, we're ready to go. Um, you know, I hope the town can look at this as a project that's a positive and they can work with us to get to the right answer, um, as opposed to, um, you know, look at the negative side of it. So again, <clears throat> looking at the Johnson case, which was the case you submitted, it, it uses a number of figures and it basically says that the the cost of demolishing the church and oh, excuse me, the cost of um, rehabbing the, the church would be more than the cost of demolishing and rebuilding. And, and that's the basis of their approval. Um, Whereas what I'm hearing here is the opposite. You're saying the cost of renovating is high, but you're gonna spend more on these new greenhouses. That to me is not a hardship. No, no, maybe you maybe you misunderstood being sorry for interrupting, but no, we would spend more if we had to actually renovate them because you're basically going to build them new and the inefficiencies of the layout Okay, well, I heard, five, I heard 5 million to demolish, 10 million to rebuild. But the, so what I'm going to say now about, about that next is, do you want to come back, uh, maybe address this to your council, with some numbers from a contractor that gives us some solid, uh, a solid foundation upon which we could possibly approve this? I feel we're doing an injustice to anyone who's ever come before our board who's asked for a variance and we've denied them, which has been plenty of people, to not hold you to the same standard. And just because you're dealing with millions versus thousands doesn't mean the standard doesn't apply. Uh, you're not really giving us anything other than this is what you think now, but that's what you told us last time. You had you were convincing last time at what your beliefs were. Uh, you don't have real, a, a solid evidentiary case here. Okay, well, so let's let a good quote would shoot this down in a minute. Okay, um, well, let's let, let's talk that through, uh, Mr. Chairman. So it sounds to me like you're looking for an apples to apples cost comparison to yeah, put this with the right. If you're telling us it's financially prohibitive to uh, renovate these greenhouses, I would like to see the numbers, and that shows us alternatively what you're doing to rebuild new ones is going to be less. If the cost of rebuilding new ones is going to be more, I don't see how that's ever going to be a hardship. 
that you that is a requirement on your part to prove where's the hardship but without any numbers we're just we're just dealing with uh, hypothetical ideas uh, well you know the the i I see the, the economic calculation that you're referencing in Johnson, but I see more than that as well. I mean, there's this notion of um, being able to reasonably use a unique structure. And, and that, that's where we see Johnson. I mean, we see the, the Johnson ruling is saying, gosh, given the realities of the site, with the placement of the structures, with the topography, with the land, et cetera, given all those things, the unique and unusual circumstances there, and that involves existing buildings. We believe that the hardship arises out of that. Think, you know, based on the difficulty, the hardship associated with using the existing structures as they sit. Look, there's some amount of money that you can put in and rebuild those existing greenhouses. You don't have to be a contractor to know that. You could spend a certain amount of money and do it. I gather that's too much money for you. That's why you don't want to do it. But until we know what those numbers are, you know, we're just we're just taking uh, representations without. Well, a quick sorry. question is 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 knocking these down all the way down to the dirt, rebuilding them in their exact location allowed by the current zoning? Because that was a part of the issue we ran into as well. From our reading of it, that could be a risk as we get through the process here. Um, but, but regardless, when I talk about uh, cost inefficiencies, it's, it's on an operational side too. When we're, we have detached buildings that are all spread out like they are, it's, it's an inefficient site, I guess is my point. Um, and, and that's part of this as well. Again, that could be, that could be quantified. If it's gonna cost you $100,000 a year to heat this all spread out versus fifty thousand to do it in the in the more modern way. Those could be impressive numbers, but we're not seeing those numbers. Um, anyway, I've talked a lot. Are the Ludlow's present? We're after seven forty-five now. Do they wish to be heard? Apparently not. No, they're here. Uh, they're just connecting to the audio. It's taking them a second to, to get the audio going. All right, well, then we'll keep talking. So then, um, <clears throat> how long do you think it would take to get us some numbers that we could hang our hat on? Well, I, I think we're at, we're at the stage of the process here where um, we need to move forward in, in some direction. So I think, again, getting ourselves in a delay position of at least another month or two, I'm not sure we're there right now. I think we may have to look at alternatives. I think that's where we are. I think we may have to um, reconsider the site. So you're not willing to come back with some other numbers? or some numbers at all? Again, I, I think we, we've talked through um, this with our investor group and our partnership group. And I think um, the variance being granted this evening was, was you know, kind of our, our step in the process of, of moving forward. And then you know, we were gonna go through this planning process back to the special permit, Sig significant delay in our minds. Um, and I think, Going back, you know, I can I can talk with our group, and I just don't think we're prepared to do that. I guess at this point, uh, Chris, why don't why don't we why don't we circle back and have a conversation about that? I think what the chairman's looking for is um, some demonstration of the economics of this in line with the Johnson case. So, um, what what I would respectfully suggest is. Um, that we work with the design build team, try to find some numbers that would, uh, you know, perhaps lay out um, the criteria in line with Johnson, consistent with the statute. And perhaps if we could get that to the board, you know, very promptly, the board would be in a position to make, to uh, render a decision. Well, do you want to take five minutes and talk about it amongst yourself? 
Um, Give you the opportunity. How do how how does uh, I, I how does that work? I mean, I mean a... mute yourselves and call each other on a cell phone in the private private room. I guess would be the suggestion. You're challenging my notion of technology already, Mr. Chairman. But I can certainly you can, uh, you can mute yourself. You know how to do that. That I can do. Right. All right. Yeah. Why, why don't we? Which? Why don't we get back to you in about five or ten minutes? Okay. See you then. Meanwhile, Stuart Ludlam is uh, showing uh, that he's trying to connect to the audio, but is unable to connect. So he's in the room. Is that via Zoom or via telephone? I, I can't. I got this. There's, there's no video connected with him. I think they the last time they were telephone. <clears throat> I don't see any telephone icons. I see two telephone icons. It, well, on my screen, it says Stuart Ludlam as his name. Well, if Mr. Ludlam can hear us, we're on a 10 minute break. Why don't you work on your audio connection, try to connect within 10 minutes via telephone or otherwise. All right, so we'll be back, in, let's say 8.10. Okay. Well, I I apologize. I wasn't aware that we were, uh, I heard the meeting was not public. So I assumed that meant us too. I didn't think we were required. I didn't get any notice or anything. So we announced it at the last hearing. Okay. We, Must've missed it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So what's that in November when? Fourth. Where you have it written down? November 4th. Fourth, November fourth, seven fifteen. Yep. Okay. All right. We'll see you then. We'll see you then. Thank you. Bye. All right. Are the folks for uh, can of select back? I think they were going for eight ten. <clears throat> Still right. got a minute. Got a minute. <clears throat> Uh, Mr. Chairman, we we had, if I may, uh, we had a chance to talk offline a little bit, and um, uh, here is our thinking. Um, we a couple of things. First, we've, you know, the the team informs you that we've been at this for a long, long time. Um, we we believe that we've put a lot of information in front of uh, the board, and we think that the information we've given um, is adequate to support the variance. Um, we also. Uh, you know, respectfully have submitted the Johnson case, not because of the economic, the, the discussion of economics there. Uh, we, we submitted that case because we believe that what it shows, it shows that if you have a unique or unusual structure in a zone, and that structure, or in earlier cases, the land could not be used in a manner that is consistent with the current zone, the, the allowed use, then that establishes a hardship if you show that being able to put that structure or that land to the use as required in the zone is, you know, is unreasonable. Uh, and you know, obviously financial hardship is a part of that. So um, what we would really ask is we, we, we would ask the, the board to think about this tonight, take a vote on it tonight, give us some direction on this tonight, given the information that's in front of you, hopefully it'll be, you know, resolved favorably. And if it is, we'll be back in short order with a special permit application. All right, well, in the meantime, um, there's a letter that came to the board that Mary is going to read. And there's a lot of those. It's very short. It's quite short. But the, Mary, does the laws ever get connected? Mr. Ludlum, are you here? 
I saw it. him up. He's in the room, but does not appear to have audio. Do we have audio? Hello? We Hello? Hear. Can you identify yourself? Yes. Yeah. Anita Lutlums. We don't have a sound card in our computer, so we had to go to the telephone. All right, so do either of you wish to have a statement uh, read? Uh, I'm not sure at this time that uh, it, it's not so much a statement, it's a question on exactly what the zoning board will be voting on. Uh, I assume that the vote will simply be on the content. No, that's wrong. It would be uh, on simply the uh, uh, permit to not use the pre-existing structures, but that everything else would remain the same as it was in the uh, site plans that were produced in uh, early March uh, and that were discussed in the uh, a letter from Levesque Associates. Also, I think that was in March. Uh, I assume that the vote would not be in consideration of anything that was produced afterwards, such as the site plan that appeared in the 8 August 21 uh, variance application, which uh, actually got a lot of people upset because they were asking for such a large area of uh, growth for growth chambers. But uh, that was basically the gist of it. I don't have any further questions. I think I've asked plenty <laughs> over the, the last couple of months and uh, probably anything else I had to say would impede the discussion right now of what the zoning board would require from Canna Select in terms of evidence to support their claims. Mr. Chairman, if, if that question was directed to me, I'd be happy to respond. Go ahead. I guess, I guess what I would say is that, that Mr. Ludlam is right, which is you know, the, the board issued a special permit for indoor greenhouse cultivation activity at this location back in March, we are now here asking the board to grant us a variance to support that same activity at the same site, but not in the structures as they existed in April, 2018. So can I ask a question? Does that, are, so the, var the variance is because you just, you want to rebuild the greenhouses. Is, is that correct? Yes, the, the, the vari the, we put the variance request in because we, we, we believe that the existing structures, that is those structures, structures that were in existence in April of 2018 would not adequately support the proposed use. So, uh, so why does that need a variance, Roger? Can you, I don't understand. So if the, it, just to have a new greenhouses needs a variance, I mean, there's a, a reason for that, I'm assuming. It's an AR1. It, it's an, it's okay. an AR1 and it's, it's the, the language of the bylaw that was adopted uh, by the town said existing structure. Okay. Our variance right. would allow us to pursue the same activity okay. at the same site, but not using the existing structures. There is an AR2 portion that runs through the site, and that's kind of why we're looking at the site saying, you know, if we're able to build in, there's like a little triangle area, uh, we could go build a building uh, tomorrow or a greenhouse tomorrow, uh, assuming we get permits and special permits and all that. Um, so we're, we're trying to look at the whole site collectively and say, let's, let's, use this thing for the uh, highest potential we can use it for. Um, and like I said, we're, we're ready to do that. Um, we just, we just want to collaborate with the town and do it the right way and, and get this done. 
right, there was a letter. Could, from, this is John LaFell. If I could just uh, say something. The, the one greenhouse out front that is in the poorest condition would be moved farther back from away from the road, farther into uh, AR. It would still be an AR1, but it would consolidate with all the other greenhouses and would be, I think, less less visible and more concise, and you would have more open space to the front where... Um, uh, where the poor greenhouse is now, uh, if that makes a difference. Uh, Mayor, can you read the letter from the um, gentleman? From Mr. Dennehy. Yes. This is a letter uh, that was sent <clears throat> by Dan Dennehy a couple of days ago. My name is Dan Dennehy, longtime resident of Waitley. I would like to express my support to allow the LaSalle Florist Marijuana Project to proceed with the elimination of the obsolete greenhouse structures and construction of new greenhouses. If unapproved, the next potential step to maximize retirement income would be rezoning to commercial. The planning board has recently supported rezoning multiple properties to commercial including the truck depot across the street from LaSalle's. As we know, once the loam is stripped and property blacktopped, the farmland is lost forever. Thank you for your time, Dan Dennehy. Okay. So if there are no other public comments and if the petitioner um, is choosing not to submit any additional information, we will proceed to take a vote. And uh, the way we do that is I'll make a motion to close the public dialogue portion of the meeting. Second. Okay. Oh, it's, it's uh, Bob, it's Kristen and myself who are voting. And uh, I'll take the lead. The, um, fact that the LaSalle property may be much loved by, by the town is um, uh, certain, certainly um, a fact here. Uh, on the other hand, is the, the bylaw itself and the board's long history of how we treat variances, which is we grant them sparingly, which is consistent with the um, SJC's interpretation of how boards should uh, handle themselves. In this particular case, the um, structure argument is, is somewhat unique. And that's why I think council had to go back all the way to 1972 to find a case that supported uh, a variance when it, it was talking about a structure versus the land and the topography, which is the typical language. But the, the very a case they want us to rely upon gives us a, a blueprint about how you make a decision in that case, which is uh, you view the economic hardship and, and you have to look at numbers. I cannot vote in favor of this variance given the, the paucity of solid financial information that's been presented. Um, I just can't do it uh, and I'm not gonna do it. So I would vote against it. Well, Roger, I, I just have a question in, in um, 17133A1, it says the literal enforcement of the provisions of this chapter would involve a substantial hardship financial or otherwise. Do we have a situation in front of us where the otherwise is that they cannot possibly do what they promised to do in the special permit, which was to abate what they could do? Excuse me, this is just for the boards to talk amongst themselves. Um, they uh, could ab abate light and um, odor. Is that enough? I just, I'm hung up on the, on the, or otherwise. So uh, there was a land court case that I had circulated to the board. It's called Whitmore versus um, Aaron. And uh, land court is below the Supreme Judicial Court to be sure, but it, it mentions the Johnson case in it. 
So I'm, I'm looking at that land court case, and it, it at least gives us a guideline. It says, in fact, substantial harm is satisfied only when it is not economically feasible or likely that the locus would be developed in the future for a use permitted by the zoning ordinance or bylaw. Um, so they put quotations around economically feasible. If we don't approve it for marijuana, what's going to happen to the to the uh, LaSalle property? We haven't heard about that. I don't know what the evidence is on that. Could be bought by someone else who's going to continue a flower uh, operation. We just don't know. Not being able to grow marijuana there, in my view, is um, one thing, but that doesn't mean you can't use it for anything else, even a traditional farm. So I think there's gotta be something more. That's the way I'm looking at it. Yeah, and further on in that case, which was ruling against the variance, it says, <clears throat> Mr. Aaron is not prohibited from going forward with any development of his property. He may alter, reconstruct, extend or structurally change his, his existing building so long as he meets the requirement of the bylaw. So if you remove marijuana from the equation, you could rip down those buildings and, and put in new greenhouses. It's only the marijuana portion of the bylaw that says you have to reuse the existing structures. You wouldn't need a variance. You have some other type of farm. Uh, I don't know why the planning board wrote it the way it did you had to reuse the existing structures. I mean, I can guess, but but they did write it that way. Um, they can seek a zone change uh, if that's what is going to be required. But, you know, the next case that comes before us for a variance you know, is going to be looking at, at, at what we did here. And I think we have to honor our tradition of enforcing these the way Courts expected to be enforced with evidence. That's my view. So you're saying we just don't have the evidence that we need to grant the variance because it really doesn't fit the hardship. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, I don't see the evidence. And so, if if there was more evidence, I mean, because obviously they're doing it because it's a hardship. They're not just doing it for no reason, uh, why, why well, would they I, not want to submit the evidence to us? I don't know, I held out an olive branch that they could come back in another, in another month and do it. But, but they have some own their, their own time um, constraints. Are we, are we allowed to speak at this point? I apologize. Are we still allowed to talk during this piece or not? Are we not? No. Okay. So we had a question for you. So yeah, I mean, they've, they've drawn a line in the sand. They say they want to vote tonight. Yeah. That's the vote that they're going to get. It's got to be unanimous. So I understand I could out on a limb, and that's something I'm prepared to handle. It has to be unanimous. You're, you've voted no. I voted no. You guys can vote yes if you want. doesn't matter though. I mean, I'm leaning towards yes, just because I don't understand the difference between the old greenhouses and the new greenhouses. I mean, the new greenhouses would probably, you know, would be beneficial, but, uh, but, you know, I'm not a lawyer, so I'm not, you know, you, you, you're the lawyer here that, that actually tells us what it, what the law says. Yeah, but I think you can rely on your common sense and everyone should rely on their common sense. So it's not a it's not a lawyer only board and it should never be that way. So common sense counts for a ton. I would vote yes. All right. That's fine. Bob. Um I would vote yes. Okay. Well, I thought that might happen. I'm voting no. So 
it's two one in favor, but it requires the unanimous vote. So the petition is denied. We will write it up and we'll file it with the town clerk. Usual appeal period applies. So Mary said we don't have any minutes to review tonight. Is there any other business? Okay. Chair, I'm sorry, this is Julie Boschman with Green Jeans Farms. I submitted an application to the board today and um, am I okay to speak? Sure. Okay, thank you. Hi everyone, I'm Julie Boschman with Green Jeans Farms. Uh, we are proposing a marijuana cultivation facility at 149 Christian Lane. Um, we're a craft marijuana cooperative. Um, I'm not sure uh, how much the board would like to hear tonight or what's appropriate, but I'm just respectfully requesting that we be added to the next agenda on the 4th. Mary has added you. Okay. I, I haven't added it yet. I, I haven't done up the agenda yet. I was just letting you know how it was shaping up. So right now it looks like uh, we have three items and Julie, yours came in at number two. <laughs> so you'll be getting a, a this will be on November 4th. You'll be getting a notification in the mail with the time and the uh, access information for Zoom. Great. Thank you, Mary. Oh, one thing we haven't talked about, the writing of these decisions is a little more problematic these days when we're not in person. So the, what we did last month, Deborah came over to my place, actually, we sat outside, socially distanced, and we wrote up two decisions. So she wasn't here, but she might be willing to help me with the drafting of it, in which case we, we'd get it out to um, Kristen and Bob in this case, and then um, Fred and Bob in the first case that we heard tonight. So we'll try to get that done before the next hearing. All right, anything else? No. See you in November. Okay, good night.